Welcome back, Strategic Angling fans. We have a wonderful episode planned for you today. I believe this is episode number 19 of Strategic Angling, presented by K&K True Value in Bettendorf, Iowa. Uh, I am joined by two wonderful co-hosts. We got JJ Patton and uh, Chuck Pfizer. And JJ is going to start out by telling us a little bit about the history of the spooks and then uh, our topwater plug. And then Chuck is going to dive into kind of a, about the bait and some of the different ones in the marketplace. So I'm going to hand it off to these guys and they're going to educate. All right, thanks Brady. So the the Zara spook or the spook um, goes back a long time. Uh, at least 100 years ago, people were carving these out of wood and sticking hooks on them. It's basically a cigar shaped bait that doesn't look like much. But when you put hooks on it and you throw it and if you're able to do this walk the dog action with it, you will, uh, you will create an action that's very uh, enticing to fish. Um, it, like I said, it goes back 100 years. They carved them out of wood. Um, James Hedden, I think, was the, was the guy that kind of developed the Zara Spook specifically. And initially it was a fairly long bait called the Zaragoza. Um, but then they changed, they changed it to the Zara Spook, uh, you know, 50 more years ago. So as long as we've been alive, it's been the Zara Spook. Um, it's a, it, it calls fish up very well from the depths. Uh, it's been utilized uh, well in tournaments. It's good for smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass. And um, it's a good, it's a good all-around topwater bait from basically... You can catch them pre-spawn, but usually from summer all the way until the end of the fall, it's a super great bait because it, it really imitates schooling fish or schooling shad. And that's a lot of times where people will throw it. You'll see guys using the heavier ones, um, throwing them at schoolers. You know, down on, there's been several tournaments in the last 10 years where they're on Lake Hartwell and they're, they're over these cane piles in 40 feet of water and they're throwing a topwater bait, which you wouldn't think you'd throw a topwater bait in 40 feet of water, but these fish will come way up there and just blast it. So it's, it's a fun way to catch fish. It's a visual way to catch fish. Uh, it's not super hard to learn how to walk the dog. Um, maybe we can get it on the water episode and kind of and kind of walk you guys through it, no pun intended. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a good way to, it's a good thing to learn. Yeah. It, uh... This bait in particular, this is a uh, super spook. This is actually what Lee Livesey just caught 42 and a half pounds and won the Bassmaster uh, tournament on uh, Lake Fork. Um, this happens to be, I believe, their biggest model. Um, this is actually a saltwater version, which is what he was using. Um, Hedden actually makes, geez, I don't know how many, five or six different sizes or different types of yeah walking baits or spooks there's a lot of different ones there's a spitting spook uh right there has a little concave in the front that actually will spit water as it's walking um Hedden is not the only company that does make the cigar shaped uh baits um uh, reaction innovation uh makes the vixen um these are really good baits but they don't make them anymore, unfortunately. Sure. Um, Why would they? Yeah. Um, Strike King as the sexy dog. Sexy dog. I'm a sexy dog yeah. enthusiast. And they come in, I think, three sizes, and they just uh, recently just uh, brought out a really large, long one, like a seven-inch version. Big old sexy dog. Yeah. Um, Evergreen makes a bait called the Shower Blow. Um, same thing. This bait spits a little bit. It's got a little concave in the front, so it kind of has double the action. Um, then you have... Berkeley Cane Walker. Yeah. Popular lower end option. Yeah. Good bait. And readily available. Very yep. readily available. And then uh, you have the Lucky Craft Gunfish. You know, basically a lot of these baits, they're like a pencil popper, the ones that have the little spit. Yeah. Pencil poppers started that. Um, and those came from saltwater. The pencil popper came yeah. from saltwater and big striper fisher. Yeah. And they've they've developed it. And what it does is he walks the dog, but also spits, spits like a water. popper right. action. Right. And, and Berkeley makes is it is the cane walker? Yeah, it does. Uh, 
and they that's named after the cane piles at, at Hartwell. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Hartwell most of the baits, um, they're all going to be basically shad imitators. Once in a while, you'll see a bluegill color, but most of the time, you're throwing these where they're schooling, trying to feed on shad, um, trying to get them to react to one of these. Um, as you'll see, sometimes they do come with a feather, and sometimes they do not. Um, I think it's preferential. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think however, you know, some people like the feather, some people don't. Um, for me, when I throw the spooks, I don't use the feather. But for some reason on the shower blow, it comes with it, and I leave it on there. I don't really, I haven't really decided whether it really does make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes if you look at if you look at the back end of these, if you put a if you put a feathered treble on the back of a bait that that narrows up, see it comes to a kind of a point. If you put a feathered treble on it, it may interfere with your walk the dog action. Good, yeah. Some of these pencil popper di uh, type, these are tail tail weighted. If you look, the back end of that thing is is thicker, thicker. than in the front end, and that helps you with casting distance. But I think it also allows you to use a feather treble without interfering with that walk the dog action. Right. Uh, but I, you know, the the, the gunfish has uh, yeah, but it has a feather in it. But I don't think the Sammy does. That's another lucky crab. Does not. Does not. Um, and so I don't know if that's why they do it, or but I, I have noticed that if you put something that would drag back there on some, like on a Spook Junior, you put a feather treble on there, I think sometimes it takes away some of the, the action that you're getting. Yeah. Put it, actually, it doesn't seem like it's a feather, but it can put a little, just enough weight right. where it makes the bottom of the bait yep. sink down a little bit. And you have, you know, as far as the regular Zara Spooks, you got three, Three basics. You got the Super Spook, the Super Spook Junior. Both of these are right. very loud. The traditional Zara Spook silent. is silent, and then they make a Zara Puppy and a Zara Pooch, and the smaller downsized versions of that one. But um, I, I I like the Super Spook Junior and the Super Spook because I like that noise. I think it calls them up. Yeah. I don't know if it matters, but most of the water I fish is not particularly super clean um, well you still got this bait let me ask you a question do you have trouble walking that with a seven seven foot three rod or I does it walk pretty well I do not see one thing about the sexy dog junior I can't get it walking with a, uh. with a bait cast reel I have to use like a spinning rod which you know on the smaller ones sometimes you have to go to anyway but yeah I'm curious I might pick some of those up just sometimes like you guys should. sometimes Brady you might be using two big a line yeah for that one um i use 30 pound braid on the small one yeah um just you got to create slack i couldn't get it's easier walk. to create slack with thinner line um when i get to the bigger super spooks i'm using usually 50 pound braid mm -hmm. um obviously they have a lot bigger hook yep but i think it's just a matter of you got to get out there and try to create that slack and that's how you get that walk the dog and maybe we'll have some on the water i might need a lesson we can on show how to that. walk this one because i can walk a yeah. lot of, i can walk all the elements with this this the other the yeah, other thing the other thing that that i i don't know if i should say this but you use a loop knot um instead of a tie and direct you will actually have it has more play in it i i hesitate to use a split ring or a snap on a bait that doesn't come with one because I think it sometimes can change it, but you can tie a loop knot, <coughs> um, which allows it to get, to uh, walk a little better. That may help you too. Yeah. The, the other nice thing with spooks is they've got just really good versatility on how you can fish them. Just like the whopper plover we talked about last week, uh, this is a very buoyant bait. You can cast it, let it sink, or let it sit. It's not gonna sink, it's gonna float. It's a great bait, you know, to work around laydowns because you can keep it in the strike zone for I mean, if you're really good at this, and I, JJ, I've seen JJ and Chuck both do it, you can work this bait without moving it more than an inch, yeah. maybe every time it goes back and, and forth. And that's the whole idea. You want it to walk as many times as possible without moving towards you. Right. Yeah. And then there's other times where you're out of school or you're trying to get a reaction like, like Livesey yeah. was, and he's yeah. moving the thing yeah, as, as quick as it goes. You can, yeah. you, you, you can't reel it very erratically. Yeah. Right. 
There, yeah. If you watch the old, well, there's probably not many YouTube videos of Charlie Campbell, but he was kind of the, the pioneer of fishing this. And he, his claim to fame was he could throw at a stump and come coming on the right side of the stump, hit the back side of the stump with the nose, and then walk it literally around the stump. Like he would yeah. do a short twitch, big twitch, short twitch, big twitch, and make it like curve around literally and i've seen videos of it and it was incredible i i'm not i'm not that good but <laughs> um but it you know if you if you play with it and you play with that short long short fast longer twitch you can you can make it like run into a dock pole or run mm-hmm. underneath the dock or around a lay down or if you're fishing you can steer a, it around yeah. yeah yeah that's a that's a fun way to catch fish oh, that's a mean, it's, the strikes it's are awesome fun. yeah what yep. rod are you using, JJ? I use a uh, I use a 734C for the Super Spook, and I also use it for the Super Spook Junior. But I actually prefer the 733, uh, and and you could use smaller like a 703 or a 683, and you could even go down the Sierra model. And the Sierras throw a spook real good. They're a little bit softer. A, a three power <coughs> three power Sierra for a for a junior and a four power for a for yeah. a super spook senior. And if you're gonna fish these with braid, this is another bait where you gotta let them load. Yeah. Load on it. It's, yeah. It's not as much like the Whopper Plopper where they've got it and you need to drive a hook. Yeah. For me, last season was my first year using braid for spooks because I didn't want to have a rod just dedicated to mono. Mm-hmm. And I found myself. Yeah. JJ even witnessed it a few times. Me just pulling bait. You know, like I would with a mono hook set, right out of the fish's mouth. So this is one where you should keep twitching it as you work it, mm-hmm. even after you've gotten a bite, till you feel it load up. Yeah. Because there's no point in ripping that thing away. Because if they want it, they're they're gonna get it. And you yeah. watch you yeah that's a, and if you watch some good uh, footage to watch is Lee Livesey like you mentioned. There's some great footage of him working the spook and you'll see this big mouth come up and, and he's like, oh, I missed it. But he still continues to work, continues to work it. And then when it bites, you just kind of lean into it like a crankbait, mm-hmm. drive those hooks in there, and then you got them. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. let's talk hooks real so quick. One thing okay. before you say that, you know, a lot of people have the problem where the braid hooks the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they'll do pauses, just a quick, and the bait actually will go around so far that it catches the line and fouls the bait up. Yep. So a lot of times, like you said, you got to keep that bait moving. But if you if you can't do that, sometimes when you first start out trying to walk the dog with these, use monofilament. It's the easiest. Way then to you do. you won't have that foul up. I think. Um, and yeah. and there's a lot of people that use monofilament for these only, but that monofilament will cure that or tie it. Some people tie a leader to the braid. Yep. But you won't have that problem of the bait getting fouled up because there's nothing nothing more frustrating. Then you've seen a bunch of fish out there schooling, you throw it to them at one time and it's fouled and yeah. you know you don't get the bite. It comes back like this, backwards, straight yep. in. For yep. me, if I had a, just a spook only setup, I think I would go mono, like 20 pound mono probably. Yeah. But I don't, I just, you know, I don't fish enough to have What well, rod are you using? I use the 734, but at times I think I wish I had the 733. I use the 733 for both of them. Yep. Yeah, I like the 733. It's, now, if I'm in really, if I'm fishing above grass a little bit and the fish are really aggressive, I probably would use the 734 mm-hmm. on the Super Spook. Um, but the 733 really walks the dog really well and there's a lot of people who will throw spooks on crankbait rods you know yeah rods that have a lot of give because again like we're talking you really don't want to rip that bait away right crankbait rod can work or a medium even can work it doesn't have to be and anytime you're walking the dog especially if you're a beginner a shorter rod is always easier to walk the dog Um, we're using seven three rods sometimes the seven three is a little too long for beginners or people that aren't used to walking the dog or people that are short like yeah me. or shorter people yeah they they have a tougher time using yep. a longer rod to do that so sometimes just go out and get like a a 703 or a 704 uh dobbins and it's a seven foot rod which would make it a little bit easier to uh get that action that you're trying to create on the bait and you don't need a high end like a, like i mentioned earlier a sierra will work a fury would work a colt would work yeah i mean you, you can use because like we said, use the 
the the lower tier Dobbins rods perform more like crankbait rods than the higher tier ones because the graphite is not the same modulus and it, it just it's just slower, which me which is like a crankbait rod. So you you can put this on a on a Fury or a Colt and 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 do just fine with it. Just mm -hmm. um, which would make it more versatile rod. You know, you can use the same rod for a spinner bait and a spook, um, or a buzz bait. You know, so it, if you don't want to buy twenty rods and uh, yep. yeah, so I've got a hook question for the two of you. Uh, it's a two parter. Part A is I primarily see spooks with straight shank traditional treble hooks. I see you guys have a couple where it looks like you've potentially changed the hooks and you've gone even mm -hmm. triple grip or EWG. That's that's first part of my question is, you know, what style of hook are we looking for on a spook? And then my second part is, on these head and brand ones, why do they have these weird silver? What is it? Because that's salt water. Salt water. Okay. They're corrosion so it's, resistant. It's not something you have to keep no. on there. That's a salt water version bait, and okay. it's just for corrosion. Because at first and I was these like, come gosh, with I that. Don't, I don't like these. These ones. come with that too. I've just changed them out. Right. But I use the. EWG when the fish are real aggressive. When they're really aggressive and you hook them on an EWG, not they're not coming off very easily. Um, when they're just slashing at the bait, um, that's when actually I use the shower blow when they're just slashing because then you got a little spit in action too. And sometimes you get a couple more, you know, spit in action. You got the tail feather. Um, sometimes they might make them eat it a little bit better. But um, I just think you have a better chance of hook up when they're slashing at it with a round bend versus an EWG. Yeah. But if they're really aggressive, the EWG is hard to beat because you don't lose many fish once okay. they're buttoned up. That's something I think I need to try because I was under the impression that spook, you know, straight shank, really. Yeah. So. And, they're, and the colors are, it's pretty basic on colors. Yep. I mean, I really only use four colors. I use a bone, a clear, a chrome of some sort and maybe a gold yeah and the gold i like for smallmouth up north black and yeah. I'll or add black I, I yeah you can black. add black yeah but other than that you don't have to get too fancy you can buy just you know buy four baits four different colors maybe a couple different sizes yep and you pretty much you got it covered one thing i would do on the on the regular spook i was just looking the regular spook comes with these harnesses as opposed to the the screw eye with the with a um, split ring. These don't have split rings, and I I would put one on this. If I was going to change this hook out, I would just cut cut it off, put a split ring through there, and then put a a different yeah. hook on. Because if you if you hook a fish on this and it turns sideways, all that does is tear out of the fish's mouth. It does not have any give. Whereas this one, you can rotate it around almost two times before it starts uh, And those are, pinching. you call these Super Spooks? This is a Super Spook Junior, yeah. Okay. They were made for salt water initially. Um, like Because I don't like this, I'll be honest, I don't like the original. It doesn't get fished for me. So I'm, Yeah, Super Spook Junior and a Super Spook to me, I mean if you were going to go out and buy top waters, it's nice to have the shower blows, it'd be really nice to have some Vixens. But uh, a shower blow is about twenty bucks. A spook is about seven. So and I, I personally think when they're eating, a, you know, when they're eating a, a topwater walking bait, I think they will eat a spook or a yeah. spook junior just just about as well. That's when you start getting a little subtle that that the, the yeah. difference. The vixens made. or something, yeah. And like I said earlier, the the casting distance. If you're throwing a long way in clean water. The, these shower blows will throw farther because they're tail weighted. They, they have a lot of weight right back here. And when bait. you throw that thing, it will go forever. And that's a what brand shower blow? Evergreen. It's an evergreen. Ah. It's a Japanese bait. Yeah. And Matt, and Matt sells them down NK there. Has those. A lot of different colors. And your cane walker is basically the same thing as a shower blows. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, with all due respect to evergreen, but. Um, it's tail weighted, it's heavier in the back, and even this one, you can look in there, you can see the, the heavy lead weights way there in the back, so when you throw that thing, you can throw that a long way, which is a, a benefit over a spook. Yeah, I think I'm gonna experiment with the evergreen. I, I tried this uh, cane walker, it's okay. I'm not loving the walking action. I'm so if you want like uh, something a little more subtle, not quite as uh, 
Kind of in between. Yeah, kind of in between. I use these, uh, it's a Lucky Craft Gunfish. Um, this is actually, I think, a 97. Here's a 117, there's a 97. Um, these are a little more subtle when the fish are a little finicky. Mm -hmm. um, these baits work really good. Drawback, they're about $16. Yeah, sure. But Why wouldn't they be? They Gerald won't. Swindle made these pretty famous. Um, great bait. I have great some. Bait. I have some very small gunfish that I think are 65s. Yeah, even smaller. And they are they are phenomenal when the when the river minnows or I don't know what they are river minnows or chubs or whatever yeah. they are, they're they're about that long and they and they go out next to the current and that that little gunfish is superb. It's in that late June July time frame and I don't know there's baby shad or whatever but they're eating these little things about that long and a, and yeah. a baby gunfish is great. Been really good in these like that late summer fall when the shad are real small these yeah. do really shine. The spook like every other bait is not a one size fits all. It's no, a, no, it's a try a bunch of different sizes and get some confident going again. It's always funner to throw the biggest. Yep. But try to catch the effective. biggest fish, but it might not be the most effective, if exactly. You, but it, but it's a lot of fun when you get them to bite it. Oh, if yeah. you want to have a lot of fun, you take the, the biggest spook you can find and go up to uh, the upper Mississippi, Lansing, Prairie du Chien area in late October. Most, you know, early November when most guys are climbing up a tree to try to shoot a deer. Uh, a big spook up there is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I had a buddy one time that said, I said, you, th I, you know, I was throwing the two hook one. I said, you throw the three hook one, huh? And he said, I'd throw a six hook one if they made it. <laughs> he said, the bigger the better. And they will come out and they'll blow that thing out of the water. You fish over wing dams and kind of yeah. on their way to wintering areas. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to finish off your year. What size line, what pound line are you using? I use 30 usually, 30, 30. pound braid, um, 40 sometimes. I mean, if I have a reel with 50 on it, and I'm, yeah. it, it's, it, you know, the line size doesn't really affect much other than casting distance. Right. It yeah. doesn't affect the action really at all. Yeah. Spook's a good search bait too. Yeah, mm -hmm. really yeah, good search does. bait. It's a good bait. All right, we're rambling. We got to get back on task. Is there anything you two want to mention before we uh, sign off and talk to these guys next week? Yeah. Um, k and k hardware down there uh pretty much carries every one of the baits we've talked about yep um they carry the berkeley cane walkers they carry the evergreen shower blows actually has one of the best selections of evergreen shower blows of about anybody there is um carries several of the super spooks super spook juniors and sometimes he does have the lucky craft if you need those he can probably get those but has a really wide range of uh, topwater baits down there and uh, give them a try. They work really well. They're fun to fish. Always, he's always well stocked and uh, K&K &K is a good place to get it. And if they don't have it, um, usually they're willing to work with you and order it. Um, and you know, the, so pretty much sky's the limit if you have something that you want and you don't want to order from an online place. Um, they will order it for you and when it comes in they'll let you know you go down and pick it up and uh